Some major news on the environment this evening. A new estimate of what will happen this summer at the North Pole. And sadly, the news is not good. We get details this evening from our chief environmental affairs correspondent, Ann Thompson. The ice that covers the North Pole floats on the water, ever-changing as it melts, freezes, and drifts with the wind. But this summer, some scientists say that ice could retreat so dramatically that open water covers the North Pole, so much so that you could sail across it. If we compare the rate of loss of Arctic sea ice that we see now with what our computer simulations were telling us, we're probably 20 to 30 years ahead of schedule. Research scientist Mark Sorez says the ice over the pole should be 3 to 10 feet thick. But with 70% of the ice lost last summer, what now covers the North Pole is new ice, thinner and more susceptible to melting. This is what happened last year. Satellite images show the record melt with big patches of open water where ice should be. This year, the ice loss is already the size of California, and there are roughly two more months left in the melting season. Scientists say the cause is global warming, and that dramatic loss of Arctic ice will impact the weather in the U.S. It acts as a cooling uh, air conditioning for the Northern Hemisphere. If you take away the ice, then it's going to get much warmer. An increase in temperature could further strain our water resources. Almost all of our water supply for agricultural use, for municipal use, comes from melt of the winter snowpack. A change at the top of the world that could reverberate around it. Well, Professor Peter Wadhams of Cambridge University, who was one of the first scientists to sail underneath the Arctic sea ice in a Royal Navy submarine, is in our Cambridge studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. Is this as apoplectic as it sounds? Uh, no, it's quite likely that this is going to happen. Um, last summer, the Arctic sea ice retreated to a, a really a record low, uh, more than a million square kilometres less than in the previous year. And if that trend continues then this year we should see the North Pole opened up and becoming part of the world ocean instead of uh, an ice covered region. For the first time in human history? Well it's the first time since any records have been kept um, and records go back over a hundred years. Should we actually be worried about this? Uh, well, I think we should. The, the changes are very rapid that are going on now in the Arctic. The ice has lost about a, a half of its volume uh, in the last 20 years. It's got much thinner and it's been retreating so that in, it's going to become an ice cover which is only there in the winter and in the summer we're going to see an open ocean stretching across the North Polar regions. And Professor, what sort of effect will this have on, on countries nearby? Well, it will change the, the whole pattern of winds and temperatures over the northern hemisphere. Uh, we'll be seeing greater snowfall around the, the, the nations around the Arctic. We'll be seeing a changed um, pattern of storms, uh, storm centres passing up through the Atlantic. It will change both the, the climate of the northern hemisphere and also the ecosystem because we'll have an open ocean ecosystem in the, the Arctic Ocean instead of a, a closed ecosystem without um, any contact between the ocean and the atmosphere. But in our lifetime we could be looking at people taking sailing holidays to the pole. Well, um, already during the summer it's possible to sail through the northeast passage, that's the northern sea route around the north of Russia, or even in some summers the northwest passage without needing to use an icebreaker because there isn't any ice there. So I think the next stage will be crossing the Arctic Ocean directly in summer. 
I mean, I think it was in 1971 you went to the Arctic in a submarine, and, and even then you could spot these changes coming, could you? Oh, yes, when well, in fact the Royal Navy has been enormously generous in al allowing us to work for, on submarines for the last 37 years, from 1971 until, in fact, the last voyage was last year in the tireless. And as we've gone on each voyage, we've been able to measure the changing ice thickness. And this is uh, one of the ways which has shown that the ice has lost about half of its thickness in the last 20 years. Um, so this very serious change is really only measurable from underneath, and that's really thanks to the Royal Navy. Mm.